You need faith in God to negotiate life. Why? Because life is full of challenges. Make God so great. Good God. That's what make him great. He made us alive. You didn't deserve it. You didn't earn it. But he decided out of his love, he made us alive with Christ. Welcome to the live stream Wednesday night Bible study of Covenant Church International with our pastor, Dr. P. Ronald Wilder. This stream is coming directly from our sanctuary located at 5407 Old Spring Bull Road in the city of Clay, Alabama, located right on the outskirts of the great city of Birmingham, Alabama. We are so delighted that you have joined us tonight. Thanks for allowing us to be part of your spiritual growth and development. You are in for a treat tonight as our pastor ministers the life-changing word of God. Also, remember this live stream will replay on tomorrow, Thursday night at 7 p.m. on our Covenant Church International Facebook page. And now for the word of God tonight, our pastor, Dr. P. Ronald Wilder. Amen. Thank you, Lauren. Good evening. Good evening and welcome to the live stream Bible study of Covenant Church International. This broadcast is this live stream is emanating right here from our sanctuary located at 5407 Old Springville Road in the city of Clay, Alabama, which is right on the outskirts of the great city of Birmingham, Alabama. It is an honor and a privilege, as I often state, to be able to come to you via live stream. I want to personally thank you for tuning in and joining in. All of the Covenant Church International members, thank you for tuning in and sharing. To all of our extended church family watching us from different parts of the country and around the world, thank you also for tuning in. And if this is your first time tuning in to our live stream, let me especially welcome you. And let me ask you a favor. Don't let this be your last time. Amen. As always, we ask everyone to share our live stream. We want our stream to reach the far regions of the country and around the world. And we can't do this on our own. I can't do it with just my profile of Covenant Churches. But if we would share that way up would spread because each one of us have different uh, areas of influence, amen, that our influence and our stream go to, profile and you'll go to. And so you know people that I don't know. And so we all share pretty soon, amen, this live stream will cover the globe. So please do that. As always, if you have not followed us or liked us on Facebook, please do so. Covenant Church International um, on Facebook. Follow us or like us. Anytime that we go live, you'll be notified. We also have a YouTube channel. We're streaming also on YouTube. Some of you watch us on YouTube. And if you're not watching on YouTube, but a man would like to, but just go to YouTube anyway and just subscribe. We need our subscriber list up. Just go to Covenant Church, get to YouTube, go to the search engine, and type in Covenant Church International Birmingham. Now, that's important. You have to put the Birmingham there, okay? Covenant Church International Birmingham. Put that in. Subscribe. Again, anytime we go live, you'll be notified. But also, on our YouTube channel, you'll have access to all of the archives of great teachings and messages that we've done, amen, over the last couple of years since we've been live streaming. You, you will have access to them. And so please, please, please do that. It's, it's worth it just to have that access, amen. And so you can just go back. Everything is profiled there in terms of what was being taught, the title and the date. You can go back and you can have access. So if you subscribe, 
You get that. Amen. Well, the Lord bless you. The Lord bless you real good. Here we are in the middle of December. Amen. Today, December 15th, that means only 10 days from Christmas. Wow. The year has gone fast. That means only 21 days from the first of the year. Amen. And so we want to make sure, amen, that we close it out with a bang and a boom. Amen. All right. Well, let's get ready to go directly into our teaching tonight. Let's get ready to go directly into the word of God as we pick up speaking about the ministry of the teacher. But let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your goodness and kindness. We thank you for your tender mercies. Lord, we declare that this is the day that you have made. We are going to rejoice and be glad in it. And so, God, now as I prepare to minister the word of God to these, your precious people, I pray for grace and utterance from the Holy Ghost that I may speak accurately and rightly divide the word of truth. Let revelation flow out of me unhindered and uninterrupted in the name of Jesus. Use my tongue tonight as the pen of a ready writer. Think your thoughts through my mind. Speak your words through my mouth. Give your people ears to hear and give them hearts to receive. And most of all, give them a mind to comprehend. Lord, we declare that the scripture declares in Psalms 130 and 119 and verse 130 that the entrance of your word giveth light and understanding to the simple. So tonight, as I teach the word of God, I thank you that light will come and understanding will come. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. All right. Our foundation scripture for this particular lesson Amen. We've been talking about the ministry of the teacher. We covered the whole fivefold. We've been on this basically all year. And we covered the fivefold. Then we did the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor. And here we are about four weeks into the teacher. So let's continue to talk about the teacher. Our foundation of scripture, Ephesians 4 and 11, and uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 12, 28. You will find them on the screen. So let's rock and roll with this what's on the screen. Uh, Ephesians 4, 4 and 11. <clears throat> And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Some I say teachers. And he gave some apostles and some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. Okay. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 12, 28. And God hath set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers. After that, miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. So notice how God set up the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers. Again, somebody say teacher. Now, let's talk about the teacher. Let's pick up what we left off last week on the teacher. Last week we concluded, we were, we, we were in James, we were talking about the fact that teachers are going to have a harsher judgment and that people shouldn't just desire to be a teacher because they're going to be judged more harshly because of what you teach. You affect people's thinking. You affect their believing. You affect their doing, their actions. So if you are teaching erroneous, then people are going to believe erroneous. They're going to think erroneous. They're going to act erroneous. They're going to do erroneous. And as a result, you've led them astray. So God calls teachers to a higher degree of judgment. That's why as a teacher, it behooves every teacher, and, I, and the real teachers do this, to study, to show themselves approved unto God. A workman, according to the scripture, need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You got to study line upon line, precept upon precept. You got to do proper hermeneutics, hermeneutics, which is interpretation and exegesis, pulling out. Okay? You got to do all of those things. What we have many people doing is not exegesis, which is going into the scripture and digging out the meaning to bring out the proper uh, interpretation. They're doing eisegesis, where they add what they want in there and teach what they think it says and what, they, and, and what it is. And so you got a lot of, rather than a lot of exegetical preaching, you got eisegetical preaching. And those are two legitimate words, exegesis and eisegesis. As a matter of fact, amen, I'll bring that to you on next week and kind of show you the kind of difference between exegesis and, 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 and eisegesis. Amen. All right. Now, so, now also, when it comes to a teacher... He that is taught the word must minister to the teacher. 
If you are taught the word, then you should minister to the teacher who taught you the word. Let's look in Galatians. That's Galatians uh, chapter 6 and verse 6. Galatians chapter 6 and I believe that should be verse number 6. Galatians uh, 6 and 6. It says, let him, let him that is taught in the word communicate, communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Now remember how I talked about many times we interpret scripture from a western mindset. This is one of those cases. Because the scripture says here, let him that is taught the word communicate. Well, we know communicate, if I'm thinking from a Western English mindset, communicate means we're talking. It means that we are dialoguing, okay? Well, that, that's not what the scripture is saying here at all. Let's, let's go further. Let's look at the, let's look at the, uh, uh, the New Living, the New Living translation of that scripture, the New Living translation of that scripture. Amen. I want to see the New Living Translation of that particular scripture. All right. It says, let those who are taught, those who are taught the word of God should do what? Provide. Provide what? Provide for their teachers. Sharing all good things with them. Okay. Let them that is taught. The word of God provide. Now, notice King James said communicate. Here it says provide. Provide what? It's talking about provide financially. Now, take me, take me, uh, take me to the Amplified. Take me to the Amplified. Amen. Take me to the Amplified. And, and let's see what the Amplified of that same verse says. And then I'll come back and, and, and break it all down. Amplified. Let him who receives instruction... In the word of God, share, look what it says, share all good things with his teacher contributing to his support. Okay, let's read that again. Let him who receives instruction in the word of God share all good things with his teacher contributing to his support. Now, let's go back to King James. Take it back where we started, King James. So, understand that communication means share. So, let him that has taught the word communicate or share or give or provide resources, finances unto him that teacheth in all good things. So, here the scripture is giving a, a command that if someone is teaching you the word, and teaching you properly and teaching you right the scripture says that you should who are taught should contribute or share all good things contributing to their financial support so that means if, if he's blessing you you ought to share so into him see it's not all about money, but the scripture teaches this. That if someone is teaching you, and what happened, many of you, many people will sit and hear good teaching, get blessed, life changed, and they never give a dime. It's like going to a restaurant and sitting down eating a meal and getting up and walking out. You wouldn't dare do that. You know why you wouldn't do it? Because you know it is against the law, it is wrong, it is criminal, and your moral conscience won't even allow you to do it. Because you feel, if I ate, I should pay for my food. And then you also, if you get good food and good service, guess what you're going to do? You're going to leave your waiter a tip. 
It's right and proper. Why do we lose our sense when we come to the word of God? Here Paul is teaching. He's telling the church at Galatia, those who teach the word, let him that is taught share, communicate. And you wonder why you're not blessed as you ought to be. Because you don't obey scripture. You obey, we obey what we want to obey. Stop siphon the anointing and the juice out of someone's teaching like a piranha and never give anything back. And the issue is, it's not so much that we need it as much as you need to give it. I'll say that again. It's not so much that we need it as much as you need to give it. You need the seed into good ground. To grow you a harvest. Amen. You know, you know, now I, 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 get, I know, I, I get it. I know you got money preachers out here. I know you got charlatans and shysters out here. I understand, I get it. But it doesn't change what the word of God teaches. It doesn't change what's right. Just because 50% of the people get divorced, it doesn't make marriage wrong. Marriage is ordained by God. So we don't stop getting married because folk having marital problems and folk getting divorced. People get divorced because of sin. Sin is the issue that's causing all the marital problems. Somewhere, somebody's sinning. Or both of them sinning. But it doesn't change God's perspective that marriage is honorable. And he who finds a wife finds a good thing. So the same holds true for this. Just because you got charlatans out there who are fleecing the people of God and robbing the people of God and raping the people of God, it doesn't change the fact that the Bible says if you are taught the word of God by a man of God or a woman of God, you ought to share or communicate or provide or give to their support because of what you receive from them. You go to a doctor for medical help, you have to pay a bill. And even if you got insurance, you're still paying. It's not free because you pay for the insurance and then you got to pay a copay when you go there. Well, you, you come to the house of God or you sitting on the live stream now and you getting spiritual help. Paul says communicate. Share all good things. Hmm? Share it. Share. Communicate. That's only right. Are you trying to preach up your offering, Dr. Wilder? Hey, well, if that's what you think, you don't know me. You don't know my integrity. You don't know my character. Okay? Here's what the scripture and, and, and showed the impurity of your mind. Because the Bible says to him that is pure, all things are pure. To him that is defiled, all things are defiled. So if your mind, so if, so if you can kind of, if, if, if you come to the conclusion that I'm trying to preach up on an offering, then your mind is defiled. Hmm? I'm trying to get you to obey scripture. If I wanted an offering just for me, I'm mad enough to ask you for it. I don't have to try to teach nothing and get you on a guilt trip. This is what the scripture teaches. Again, let's look at it. Put it on the screen. This, this, is, this is Galatians 6 and 6. As a matter of fact, I, let's, just, let's just look at it. Let's, let's, let's look at it. Let's go back to verse 1. Let's work our way down in Galatians. Take me back to 1 and let's work our way down. Since this is a Bible study, let's work our way down. We can keep it in the Amplified. Let's just stay right there. Brethren, if any man, with this amplified version of Galatians chapter, chapter 6, we're going to go down to it. Brethren, if any person is overtaken in misconduct or any sin of any sort, you who are spiritual. See, he's talking to a church that he considers spiritual. He says, you who are spiritual, who are responsive and controlled by the spirit, should set him right and restore and reinstate him without any sense of superiority with all gentleness, keeping attentive 
eye on yourself. Why? Lest you also be tempted. Verse 2. Bear, bear, that is endure or carry one another's burden. Help bear one another's burden. You who are strong, carry the weak. That's what he's teaching the scriptures here. Bear one another's burdens and troublesome moral faults. And in this way, fulfill, observe perfectly the law of Christ, the Messiah, and complete what is lacking in your own obedience to it. For if any person thinks it's up to be somebody too important to be condescending, uh, condescending to shoulder another's load when he is nobody of superior except his own estimation, he deceives himself. King James said, he who thinks, is, who, who thinks more, highly, or more highly of himself than he ought deceives himself. Okay, so he's talking about don't, don't, don't think of yourself more highly than you ought. I know people who think of themselves more highly than they should. Let's go further. Verse 4. But let every person carefully scrutinize and examine and test his own conduct and his own work. You, you, you know, you do a self-examination. He can then have personal satisfaction and joy of doing something commendable in himself alone without resorting to boastful compassion to his neighbor. If you do, if you do a self-examination saying and, and, and be honest about where you are, then you can have the personal satisfaction of doing something without the comparison. See, some people are so messed up with their own self-esteem that they can only feel good by comparing themselves to somebody else. Amen. Uh, especially someone they feel less than them. God never called us to play the comparison game. I mean, I'm in ministry. Too much, too much of what I've seen happen pre-COVID was comparison. Comparing churches, comparing pastors, comparing buildings, comparing bank accounts, comparing cars, comparing how many members we got. All this compare that is not God. And that's what the church had become to. Hmm. But COVID came along. And, and upset all of us, and nobody had nothing to compare everybody to. At the height of the COVID bad pandemic, and, and we're not out of the pandemic yet. Don't, don't, don't fool yourself. But I, uh, at the height of the pandemic, uh, when we was all shut down, and the most people that let come into church was 10 people, and by the time you, you came and your sound man came and your musicians came, that was it. I told a pastor, a good friend of mine, Apostle Stephen Davis, Pastor Refresh Family Church, not far from here. I said, Brother P Apostle Davis, we all, the, 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 the playing field been level. We ain't nobody got nothing to compare to. Because we all only have 10 members right now. So COVID killed the comparison game because we have nothing to compare to now. That's what COVID done. And that was a good thing because we had gotten, we had lost our way. We had lost our way in the world. Instead of being the church, we're comparing the church. We're all on the same team. We don't all have the same job. But COVID killed our comparison game. So we have nothing to compare with now. Even, even as people begin to come back, nobody's coming back at the height they were before. So what do you got to compare to? God used COVID to humble us. I hope we maintain the humility and learn the lesson that he's trying to teach us out of this. I hope we get it. I hope we get it. Now let's go to verse 5. For every person will have to bear be equal to understanding and come receive his own load of oppressive faults. In other words, every man going to bear his own burden. Okay? Verse 6. Let him who receives instruction in the word of God share all good things with his teacher, contributing to his support. Hmm? Paul says part of your responsibility as a believer when you are taught by a teacher, when you are taught the word of God, be that teacher, be your pastor, or whoever he is to you, you should give, you should share. Are you listening to me? And not feel guilty, let nobody put you on no guilt trip. When the pandemic first came, 
and we were live streaming. Many of us were very careful to talk about finances and resources. Because we didn't want to, in the middle of a pandemic, look like we were insensitive to people losing jobs, not having and all of this and all the help people needed. And so we backed. I know I backed up big time. And I know other pastors did too. We talk about it. And maybe rightfully so. But the brakes that I felt myself on have been released. Pandemic or no pandemic. I'm going to talk about what needs to be talked about. And some of that talk revolves around believers' responsibilities to give. Okay? And, and, and what God requires and calls us to do. Are you listening to me? We were sensitive for a moment. And God gave you a moment to breathe. But that moment is over. Now it's time that we get back down to real kingdom business. <laughs> Somebody type in the doctors getting down to kingdom business. Amen. And so, and so, so, so what I'm saying to you today, I wouldn't have said this in the height of the pandemic, amen, a year and a half ago. But today I'm saying it. Whether it's me or whoever, if they're teaching the word of God right. Now, let me help you with something else. It just, it, it just keeps coming up in my spirit. And, and, and I, I, think I, need to, I think I need to just deal with it since, since, since I'm right here. I'm, I'm a teacher, so since I'm right here, let me do what I need to do. Uh, I think I need, I think I need, I think I need 1 Corinthians. Uh, I, think, I think it's 1 Corinthians that I need. Uh, uh, I think I need 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Yeah, give me First Corinthians chapter nine, uh, Deacon Mark, and I believe I need. I, I think. Uh, I think. Let me see where I want to start it. I, I definitely need King James version. Yes. Let me make sure that's where I need to be. First Corinthians. Mm hmm. I'll be with you in a moment. Hold on, hold on, hold on. There we go. First Corinthians, I think it's nine that I want. Let me see. Yes, yes, okay. Now, Paul is in First Corinthians is beginning to defend his apostleship. Now, I've been talking to you about sharing all good things because I hear people talk because they get messed up that pastors are calling to full-time ministry. And they claim, well, why don't they go get a job like everybody else? Well, this is a job. And don't let nobody put you in bondage because your church provides for your pastor. That's what they're supposed to do according to this Bible. Okay? So don't listen to these, these crossed up, mixed up, messed up people that try to tell you that you that they, you're getting taken advantage of and your preacher needs to go get a job just like you. He has a job unlike you. Because you have set office hours, okay? You go to work at 5 or 8 and get off at 4. We don't have that. You call us 24-7. Your job can't call you in the middle of the night. Your boss may not call you on the weekend or on vacation. Yet you do us, and we have to be on call. But let's, let's, let's deal with this from the scripture. Let's see what the Bible says. Let's see am I in the Bible here. Because people got this mixed up, especially sometimes we as African Americans. Other cultures understand this a little better than we do. They do. They do. I, 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 I'll, I'll say they, they understand this a little better than we do. Are you listening to me? Let's talk. So Paul defended his apostle. Look, he said, he said Am not I an apostle? Am not I free? Have not I seen the Lord? Are you not my work in the Lord? He's defending his apostleship because there were questions about his apostleship. Same type of stuff we have. He said, you are not you my work? In other words, aren't you the works that validate my apostleship? Verse 2. Verse 2. If I be not an apostle to others, unto you yet doubtless I am for you, for you the seal of my apostleship. You know what he's saying? 
I may not be an apostle to nobody else, but I am to you, Corinthian church. I may not be that to nobody else, covenant church, but I am to you. Doesn't matter what they think, but I am to you. That's what Paul is saying. Corinthians, I'm saying the covenant, I am to you. Hmm? I am an apostle to you. Verse 3. My answer to them that do examine me in this. Have we not the power to eat and drink? Don't I have the authority? I can eat and drink what I want to. Have we not power to lead about a sister or wife as well as other apostles and other brethren of the Lord and Cephas of Peter? Hmm? Or only I and Barnabas have not power for we forbear working. Go back to verse 7. Go back to verse 6 for me. I'm sorry. Go back to 6. Let me see 6 in the, in the New Living Translation. They were complaining to Paul about caring for him and the fact that he wasn't working in what they would call a regular job. He said, he said, or oh, is it only Barnabas and I have to work to support ourselves? See, he said, all the, he said uh, don't all the other apostles get that? He said, do Barnabas and I have to work to support ourselves? Okay, thank you. Now go back to King James and take me to verse 7. He says in verse 7, who goes to warfare at any time of his own charges? In other words, what soldier goes to warfare and pay for it? What soldier goes to war and, and, and have to pay for his trip to the, to the, to the, uh, to the uh, boot camp? What soldier pays for his uniform? What soldier have to buy his own gun and ammunition? He don't. He don't go to war of his own a charge. That the, the military who calls him pays for him. And what Paul said, if I've been called into this warfare, into the ministry by the Lord Jesus, do I go of my own charge? Look what he says. Who plants a vineyard and don't eat the fruit thereof? You don't plant a garden and the whole neighborhood come eat from your garden and your family get no food? Huh? If I plant the vineyard, if I plant the vineyard of Covenant Church, shouldn't I eat the fruit of the vineyard of Covenant Church? These people are out of scripture, y'all. Look what he says. Who feeds the flock and don't eat the milk of the flock? Man, do y'all see this? Say, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Mark, to work this so hard, but give me verse 7 in the New Living Translation too. Give me verse 7. Are y'all seeing this? This is what teacher does. A teacher dissects the word and teach you and show you and help you understand. Look at that. Look what it said in the New Living Translation. What soldier has to pay his own expenses? What farmer plants a vineyard and doesn't have the right to eat some of his fruit? What shepherd cares for a flock of sheep and isn't allowed to drink some of the milk? Do y'all hear me? Do y'all hear me? The church shouldn't give him nothing. He should do it for free. That is not what the Bible teach. The Bible doesn't teach you to do this for free. If you believe I should do this free, then you go work at your job for free for 40 hours next week. Now, you don't believe that. Let's go further. Take me back to King James and give me, give me the next verse, verse, verse 8. My God, hallelujah. I say these things as a man. Or say if not, the law say the same also. He said, I say these as a man, but don't the law say the same thing? Hmm? Are y'all listening to me? And as Paul is saying, am I just expressing just my human opinion or does the law of God say the same thing? The truth of the matter is the law of God said the same thing. Verse number nine. For it is written in the law of Moses. It is written in the law of Moses. Thou shall not muzzle the mouth of the ox 
that treadeth out the corn. Doeth God take care of the oxen? In other words, in the, in, in the Bible days, what they did, the ox would, 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 would pull along so they could train the ground to plant, to plant yuck, to plant seed. If they had no ox, they couldn't farm. And if the ox is going to be strong to, to carry uh, all the stuff you have to carry to dig the ground, the ox got to eat. And what they're telling you is don't muzzle the ox. Don't put a muzzle of his mouth so he can't eat. Because if he can't eat, he can't tread out the corn. As long as the ox is treading corn, make sure he eats. The analogy of what he's saying as he God's ministry, if the pastor, if the man of God is treading out the corn, he's teaching the word, he's laboring the word, don't muzzle his mouth. Read the scriptures. Read the Bible. Huh? It sounds like what that is saying is that God wants his man to be blessed, to be able to muzzle and give, I mean, to give out the corn. Verse 10. Hmm. Or say if he all together for our sakes. For our sakes, no doubt it is written that he that ploweth shall plow in hope. And he that thirsts in hope shall be a partaker of his hope. In other words, the one who is threshing out the corn has the hope that he'll receive something from his labor. That's what he's saying here. Verse 11. Holy smoke. If we have sown to you spiritual things, is it a great thing that we reap your carnal thing? This is Paul, the apostle, talking. Look what he says. If I have sown to you spiritual things, and what I'm sowing to you right now is spiritual. That's my job. I give you something spiritual. You give me something carnal. He said, is it a great thing we reap your carnal things? Let me see verse 9 in the, in the New Living Translation. Let's look at verse 11, I'm sorry, in the New Living Translation. I know I'm working by my technician back there, but I appreciate it. I love you, Deacon Mark. You just, yeah, amen. You don't know how much I love you. Uh, look at that. It said, since we have planted spiritual seed among you, aren't we entitled to a harvest of physical food and drink? Let me see the Amplified. Amplified. My God. Amplified. If we have sown the seed of spiritual good among you, is it too much we reap from your material benefits? In other words, if I have given you spiritual things that's changed your life and your family, is it too much for me to receive from your material an offering from you, a seed from you? Go back to King James. This is Bible. I, I'm in the book, y'all. So if we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing we reap your carnal things? So what you have here, people of God, listen to me very carefully. Type this in the chat room. Type it in the chat room. Type this down. The law, and y'all know I'm high on laws. What is a law? A law is a rule of action. A rule of action. Okay, I will share that in just a moment. I'll share it right now. I just heard this in my spirit. The Holy Ghost said to me, tell the people that the church can never move into its greatest dimension of blessings until it first take care of its man of God. God has ordained it so. The church, whether it's my church, your church, or any church, cannot move into its fullest dimension of blessings until it makes sure that its leader is man of God, God's, because think about it, I'm God's delegate. So how you treat me shows God what you think about him. Whew. 
I'm, in, I'm his ambassador. I, he sent me here on his behalf. I speak for him. I speak as him. I'm his delegate. And if you mistreat me and don't take care of me, you are saying to God, I don't care nothing about you. Whew. If we are sown to you spiritual things, it's a great thing we read your carnal thing. Now, you know, how, you're not, you know how I'm on laws. What is a law? A law is a rule of action. A law is a rule of action. Something that cannot be reversed. Gravity. It's a rule of action. Gravity says, the law of gravity says if you go up, gravity is going to pull you back down. I don't know one person yet that has defied gravity. Not one. You can't defy gravity. You can't defy it. You can't walk off of a building or walk off of a ledge and just stay suspended in the air. Gravity won't allow it. I don't know nobody that has violated gravity successfully yet. I don't know nobody that has negotiated gravity. You know why planes crash? Can I tell you why a plane crash? Technology has taught men. Men have learned by technology how to negotiate gravity a little bit. Because you have a law, but you can have another law that may supersede that law to cause you to override certain parts of that law. Okay? So we got the law of gravity. Law of gravity says what goes up comes down. It's gravity. Well, in aerodynamics, they've discovered two other laws. The Wright brothers eventually learned this started because they had the first flight, but then others have come along and perfected the, this, the, the, uh, the, law, the law of lift and the law of thrust. Okay? The law of lift and the law of thrust, when combined together, cause airplanes to fly. Now, it takes engine power and all these other things going with it, all the wings, all that. But they, they, they've learned to put all that stuff together and, and take the law of lift and the law of thrust and cause a plane to fly. So this big piece of metal weighing hundreds of thousands of pounds can carry two and three hundred people and all the luggage and all that weight and it will lift off the ground and defy gravity and fly from one place to another because, they, because the law of lift and the law of thrust overrides gravity for a season. It can't permanently do it, but it can for a moment, for the time it's been there. Okay? When planes crash, maybe the engine goes out. Maybe something happens to a part they caused it not to function. As a result, the non-function of that part kicks out of gear the law of thrust or the law of lift. So when the engine quits, the law of lift, amen, is suspended. And gravity pulls the plane down and we got to crash. Because in order for a plane to fly and land properly, thrust and lift have to be functioning right at all times. Any violation of these laws, lift and thrust, by a mechanical failure, an uh, 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 equipment failure that will break the law of thrust of a lift will cause the plane to crash. And thus gravity supersedes again. It's a law. Can't violate laws. Well, here in 1 Corinthians 9, she'll put it up on the screen again. If we have sown to you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we reap your carnal things? And this is a law. Type it down. I told you five minutes ago, I had to bring it. Here you go. Type this down. The law of exchange. Type it again. Or say it again. Somebody say it. The law of exchange. Say, Doc, Dr. Wilder is teaching us right now the law of exchange. In 1 Corinthians 9-11, the law of exchange. What's the law of exchange? Exchange means we trade something. We give each other something. I give you something, you give me something. The law of exchange. I give you spiritual, you give me carnal. And we both are blessed. The law of exchange. Hmm. See, 
Are you listening to me? Now, what happens when I give you something spiritual and you don't, you don't reciprocate and give me some calm? They would, it's like law, thrift of law. The law, thrift, thrust, and lift. Equipment failure causes it to come down. So, so although I give you something spiritual, it won't benefit you to the degree because you didn't, you didn't follow through in exchange. And so you violated the law. And so the law can't work for you at its highest capacity. And so your blessing that was came flying to you will crash because you violated the law of exchange. God Almighty. Woo! Good God. I got to get out of here. The law of exchange. I give you something spiritual, you give me something carnal. Hmm. Your man of God give you something you spiritual, you give him something carnal. We started this with Galatians 6. If they sown to you spiritual things, I'm sorry, those who teach you the word communicate. Now, let's go further here. So you got that there. The law of exchange. If this is help, you say, Pastor, Doctor, you, you, this is, you walking tall at night. Somebody put walking tall in there. Hallelujah. And put J-D-B by walking tall. That's Joe Don Baker. That's the original walking tall that came out in 1973. Okay, Not the rock. I like the rock. But the real walking tall was Joe Don Baker. Hmm. Let's go deeper. Let's go deeper. Take me to verse 12. If others be partakers of this power over you, in other words, the other apostles are getting blessed by you. Are not we rather? Shouldn't we also? You support the others, shouldn't you support us? Nevertheless, we hadn't used this power. I had a right to it, but I hadn't used it. I had a right to receive from y'all, but I hadn't even used it now. Good God. But suffer all things. Lest we should hinder the gospel. The New Living says to like this here. If you supported others who preach to you, shouldn't we have a greater right to be supported? Whew. Verse 13. Do you not know? Look what it says. Do you not know that they which minister about the holy things live of the things of the temple? Do you know back in the old covenant, those who, who, who minister in the temple live by the stuff came in the temple? That what the tithe and all that was for? And they which waited at the altar were partakers of the altar? New Living Translation right there, 13. New Living Translation, 13. Do you not know? Oh, that's King James, New Living. Do you not, do you not, don't you realize that those who work at the temple get their need, get their meals from the offering brought to the temple? And those who serve at the altar get a share of the sacrificial offerings? That's God's way. It's God's way. Now, you don't believe me? Look at 14. Stay with New Living, then we'll go to King James. 14 in the New Living says, in the same way, in the same way, the Lord ordered that those who preach the good news should be supported by those who benefit from the good news. In other words, I'm preaching the good news and teaching the good news to you that I should be supported by those who hear the good news. King James, King James. I love what King James says here. Look what King James says, verse 14. And I'm going to stop here because my time is up. Even so, look at here, look at here, y'all. Look at the King James Version. Even so, the Lord ordained. He didn't, just, he didn't just speak it. The Lord ordained it. He commanded. He ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. Whew. And you hear tripping? Because your pastor receives. I'm not, and I'm not talking about y'all coming to church. Y'all got it together here. I'm not talking about I'm just, I'm, I'm speaking, I'm speaking to a broader audience here. I'm speaking to a mindset, okay, that's, that's far beyond you because you've been taught, okay? But there are many people who have not. And I'm telling you what I hear, even from church folk. So, 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 so what we do is our work, it's our job. It's what we've been called to. And God has ordained. We didn't do this because this is what we wanted. We decided this is how it should be. The Bible says it. 1 Corinthians 9, 14. Even though, even so have the Lord ordained. Argue with God that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. Whew. 
Now let's go to verse, let me, let me see Amplified right there, and we're going to stop here. Let me see Amplified. Let me see Amplified. On the same principle, on the same principle, the Lord directed that those who publish the good news, the gospel, should live or get their maintenance by the gospel. So, pastor, don't feel guilty another day. You are doing what God told you to do. And you ain't deserving of every blessing that God gave you. Let's close out where I started at Galatians 6 and 6. Take me back to Galatians 6 and 6. This is where I started at. Talking about the ministry of the teacher. Now, we, you talk about the ministry of the teacher. I have just demonstrated for you tonight what the ministry of a teacher is. The teaching the anointing came upon me, and I have taught you the scripture tonight concerning the care of what ministers are, do, and pastors are do based upon scripture. Now, you have to be out of your mind or just warped to try to debate that because there is no debate there. There is no debate. It's as plain as the nose on your face. Ministry of the teacher just took you in the scripture and showed you what God says. As a backup to Galatians 6 and 6, put it on the screen from the sea, firm, sir. Let him that is taught the word of God, let him that is taught in the word communicate or share or provide unto him that teacheth all good things. That's what we started at. So you have a responsibility in the office of a teacher is that if they're teaching you the word, you should, you should sow into them. Now, that's what you should do. Even tonight, that's what you should do. You've been taught well. You should sow tonight. I didn't say this for that. I had no idea I was going this way. This was not my plan tonight. However, part of the part of the the, 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 the action, because we should always act on what we've heard, part of the action is to do what you heard tonight. Is to act on what you heard tonight. If they've taught you the word. I didn't even get into Timothy where the scripture says, let him that is taught the word, teach and labor, be kind of worthy of double on. We didn't, we didn't even get there. We didn't even go there in the Timothy. Huh? Scripture is very plain, people. Again, I, I, I get it. I know we got charlatans out there. But we can't allow them to set the agenda and, and, and the narrative. Scripture have to do that. Scripture have to do that. Are oh, you listening to me? There was a time I wouldn't have taught like this again in a pandemic. Or I wouldn't have taught it because people would have said, well, you, you, you're you self serving you're trying to preach it. But that's, that's for someone else to decide. I know my integrity, you know my heart. And tonight the apostolic anointing is on me. The apostolic anointing, the apostolic teaching anointing to teach the body. Let's get this stuff right. Let's get it in order. And stop letting people put you in bondage because you bless your leader. You bless them to help you. It's the rightful thing to do. It's the godly thing to do. It's the moral thing to do. It's the biblical thing to do. It's the gospel thing to do. It's the scriptural thing to do. Amen. Well, did you get some out of that tonight? My time is up. I thank you for yours. I trust you were blessed by that tonight. Let me pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the precious anointing of the apostle and the apostolic teaching anointing that came upon me tonight to share and communicate to your people what the scripture teaches about their responsibility to those who teach them the word and those who lead and pastor them. 
I thank you, God, that you know my heart and my purpose for following your leading and teaching this tonight. You've always called me to be a minister to teach order and speak order. And these are things that must be put in order and set in order in the church in Jesus' name. So without fear and with boldness, I proclaim your word. And I thank you that tonight the word of God fell on good ground, on good soil. In Jesus' name we pray. Ain't going to bring forth much fruit. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I want to give you a chance to sow now into the ministry here at Covenant Church International. As you give in whatever area, you can give a love offering. You can do it on the site. Or if you desire, I want to be a blessing to you personally, Dr. Wilder. I want to bypass the church and go straight to you. Amen. In the comments chat area, someone will probably stick my cash app there. So I don't want to put it over the screen, but if you look in the chat area, amen, it'll pop up in the chat area, amen, uh, my uh, cash app, if you want to be a blessing directly for what you learned tonight. But there are several ways to give, number one's on our church website, www.covenantchurchintl.org. Go on our website, two ways to give there, hit the online giving icon and go to that page, you'll see church by mobile as a guest or member. You'll see, you'll see PayPal, either one of those you can give on, on our website. They're both encrypted very strongly, so you can give a tithe offering, love offering, whatever you want to do, and without any uh, fear or worry, amen, you can be totally secured, amen, and, 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 and how secure your information will be www.covenantchurchintl.org. Second way you can give us Cash App, Covenant Church International's Cash App. It's on the screen. Dollar sign, Covenant B. Ham. Dollar sign, Covenant B. Ham. Dollar sign, capital C-O-V-E-N-A-N-T, capital B-H-A-M, Covenant B. Ham. Then you could send a check, make it out to CCI, show up for Covenant Church International. Take that check and drop it in an envelope, address an envelope to Covenant Church International, P.O. Box 546, Pinson, Alabama, 35126, and send it, amen, in the mail, and we will get it, amen. Either one of those three ways, amen, go ahead and do it. Let's make our confession of our giving right now. As we give today's offerings, we are believing the Lord for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commission, settlements estates and inheritances, houses and automobiles, interest and income, rebates and return, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, witty inventions, fine money, bills paid off, blessings increase, bills decrease, streams of income, great expectation, possessing our inheritance. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for every offering given tonight, whether love offering or general offering, I speak and decree it come back to your people, good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. Cause men to give back to their bosoms in Jesus' name. The seed that leaves their hand tonight, don't let it ever leave their life. But multiply them and let it come back. Let them be abundantly supplied, having always having more than enough in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, for me never need to come to Church International. We have more than enough. We are bound with much prosperity and much resources. We are a wealthy church with unlimited resources. Large gifts, 10,000, 25,000, 50,000, 100,000, 250,000, 500,000. A million dollar gifts are sown. At those levels are sown into this ministry. I believe it. We receive it done in Jesus' name. Amen. Now listen, don't forget this, this the teaching you heard tonight. It's going to replay tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. You don't want to miss it. If you, would, if you, need, you know somebody that's jacked up and messed up over these areas, tell them to tune in tomorrow. Tell them about the replay. And let somebody get blessed hearing. You might want to double dose yourself. 7 o'clock tomorrow night on the Covenant Church International Facebook page. Amen. Now, let's not forget that this Saturday 
at the Clay Chalk for High School. It's 5 o'clock p.m. to 7 p.m. Amen. It's our Christmas walk through nativity. Amen. Sponsored by Covenant Church International and Refuge Church Birmingham. Amen. It's going to be a live nativity. It's going to be great actors, animals, live music, just the whole Christmas story that's going to touch you as you see the Christmas story acted out. Amen. At the Clay Chalfer High School, amen, on, on, on Road Chandler Road, amen, our home of the state champs, amen, Cougars. And actually, we'll be adjacent to the football field now, on the band field, which is right to the right of the football field. You'll be able to park in the parking lot and walk up there and walk through the nativity. It's going to be great. So please, you in the Birmingham area, it was scheduled to be last Saturday, but because of the rain and the bad weather, and I know it's scheduled to rain Sunday, Saturday, but we are praying and believing God that he's going to hold back the rain, that this event can go off. Amen. So that's this Saturday, December 18th, 5 p.m. to 7 p.m., the nativity, the walk through nativity. It's a Christmas event. You don't want to miss it. Amen. So please be on the, be there. Amen. And be blessed by that. God bless you. Listen, don't forget, continue to wear your mask. Numbers are spiking up all in sports, football, basketball. Hospitals are filling up. We're not out of a pandemic yet, people. And people are acting like everything is normal. We are not. Continue to wear your mask. Continue to social distance. Continue to take the precaution you need to protect. To protect your family and those you love. And yourself even. Okay? May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Now unto him that's able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless. Before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory 